All right, guys, here we go. One last overview of all the ZJ parts we're going to be putting on our XJ. And we're going to start with these beautifully restored backing plates and dust covers. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dan H., and welcome back to the project. In this video, we're going to go over every single part you guys are going to need to put ZJ rear disc brakes on your Jeep Cherokee XJ. So a little while ago, I filmed a video where we took off all the disc brake components from a ZJ. So go back and check that out. When you come back here, we're going to go take a closer look at all these parts I pulled. All right, guys, so here we go. This is the meat and potatoes of your ZJ to XJ rear disc brake swap. So what we're going to do is make sure we have a set of calipers and a backing plate and dust cover. <laughs> this, this side doesn't even have the e-brake setup, but don't worry. I'm not putting it on my XJ in this condition anyway. I can't stand disgusting parts, and I don't want a tetanus shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean all all this stuff up. I also got the axles from my ZJ that has ABS because I want to put ABS on my XJ. So those are the ABS sensors and here are the axle shafts that have the tone ring. So uh, if you don't want ABS, you don't have to worry about the axles and that. We're just going to focus on this for now. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go clean some of this stuff up so we can rebuild our backing plates and our calipers. Before we get started on our backing plates, I just want to take all this hardware the lug studs and the backing plate studs that are pretty rusty. Uh, we're going to get them in the tumbler, but first I'm going to put them in this cup. I'm going to fill it up with a little mineral spirits. And we're just going to set this cup aside. We're going to let the mineral spirits soak in, do its thing, break up some of the grease and grime, and we'll get this in a tumbler. So the tumbler can clean all our nuts and bolts for us so we don't have to do a thing while we're working on the other parts. Okay, now that we got our hardware soaking, we can start on this backing plate. <laughs> this is one part that won't fit in the tumbler, so we're going to clean it by hand. I'm going to go ahead and take off these uh, caliper pins. These are good. We're going to have to save these caliper off. We will rebuild the caliper shortly. For now, we're going to rebuild the backing plate. Ugh. All right, I got to detach this e-brake cable. So this is crust it up. I'm just going to hammer this out. Then you can pop this over. And this thing's supposed to move freely, so that's a problem. <laughs> now the good old 12.13 millimeter. This will get your brake cables off every time. Just want to compress these little springs. E-brake cable out. Here's your dust shield on your backing plate with your e-brake set up. And this is just rusted solid. So we are going to get rid of this. All this stuff we're going to replace. So um, let's go ahead and throw this in the trash. Whack these little springs down. Free up this clip. And do not stab yourself. You do not want a tetanus shot. So here's a spring clip. This pin, garbage. On this side. Keep this pushed in so this could slide back. Oh, yeah. More garbage. Just gonna take off these springs. Actually, probably should take off these springs first. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> take off the springs first, then take off the pins. Let's see if we could just roll this out. There we go. All this. It just doesn't even have the brake shoes on. This is garbage. All right, chuck in all of this stuff. And these little parking brake levers, these are nasty, but uh, we are going to reuse these. If you can't reuse yours or you don't have them, oof, this is pretty stuck. This is two pieces. <laughs> they do sell these online. Um, I'll post a uh, part number. If I could reuse these, you could reuse yours. <laughs> now we're gonna separate the dust cover from the backing plate. It's really simple. There are just two rivets holding this thing together. And we're gonna drill them out with a 3 16 bit. I don't know if you can see it, but I promise you this is 3 16 3 16 is very important because we're gonna use that measurement a little later on in the reassembly process. Pop rivet. <laughs> A 
All right, the shield is off. Uh, look at all of this rusty nastiness. This is your parking brake lever boot. And this is so crusted and rotted on, I don't think we're gonna be able to salvage this. Oh yeah, she's rusty and crusty. Nasty. Oh, this is brittle and charred. <laughs> we are not going to use this boot. All right, here we go. Back to our rivet hole. Here's a 3 16 punch. Again, 3 16 very important. Pop that rivet right through. And we'll do the same up here. Once you're satisfied you got all these big chunks of rust off your dust cover and your backing plate, you can set these aside. Now we'll work on our caliper. Get this brake pad off. Outer brake pad. They got some meat on them, you know, but we're going to uh, put new ones on. So, Oop, garbage. Pop this one out. Let's take out our pins. Fold this in, take out these little dust boots. If there's no rips in them, you could reuse these. Now we're gonna take off our banjo bolt. So we got a 14 millimeter on here. And we got the caliper in the vise. And we're gonna be mindful that the lifted side goes up, so we're gonna keep that in that orientation. And also, you gotta pay attention to these copper washers here. We are gonna replace these later, and we'll set this aside in a safe place. So yeah, we're just gonna put a little air in here, and I got my rubber tip, so we'll put the rubber tip in the banjo bolt hole, and what we're gonna do now is I got some crushed up uh, paint sticks here, or a block of wood. You're gonna wanna make sure your fingers are clear of this area. <laughs> and we're gonna pop this piston out. <laughs> All right, there we go, that was easy as pie. The piston is out. This is in pretty good shape. So we'll set this aside. Yeah, this isn't coming off like I'd hoped. It's probably rusted in there. I'll try again. Ooh, bad news. Well, we're gonna replace these anyway, so <laughs> why not just get this off with a vice grip? See if she budges with this. There we go. No sweat. 3 8 bleeder, nice and rusted. Goodbye. So I got this old kitchen knife, and uh, it's gonna go ahead and Tap the knife around this seal's edge and give it a little pry. Should come right off. No biggie. Oh, there we go. And of course, since we're changing the seal, usually the seals come with this little rubber gasket, so we're not going to need this gasket. Go ahead and pull this out. There we go. All right, now we're going to take a good look at the inside of the caliper. Now, here's what you want to pay attention to. This surface right here is where your piston slides up and down, or in and out, rather, and you're going to want to make sure this is free of any scoring, rot marks, uh, rust, creases, gouges. You want this to be smooth in here. Eh, the middle doesn't count. Um, that's going to be like that from the factory, but this is where it's bored out, and this has to be smooth. If this, if this surface is crappy in any way, then just chuck the caliper or save it for a core charge, core refund. Uh, you won't be able to use it. Um, but here we go. This is the caliper. 
Looks like it's in good shape in there, so we will freshen this up. Now when you're freshening up, make sure you do not freshen up these rings right here. These rings crush on the copper washers and they prevent brake fluid from leaking out. So do not grind those away. Yeah baby, crushed walnut medium tumbler, here we go. So we're just going to drain out the mineral spirits, empty out our hardware, dry them off really good. <laughs> this is great. All we gotta do is throw all our nuts and bolts into this crushed walnut medium. All these lug studs and lug bolts, and they're gonna come out nice and clean. Gonna tighten down our wing nut, and when we throw this switch, clean hardware. Alright, pour 15, cleaner degreaser, mixed 50-50, water and degreasing solution. So we're gonna go ahead and coat this really well. We will get the cleaning on. All right, we got our parts nice and pretty dry. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit them with our Pour 15 Metal Prep. This is a metal etching prep spray. I mixed it 50-50 with water in my spray bottle. I don't want to etch the inside of this brake caliper. I'm just gonna stuff this so the inside doesn't get etched. I wanna keep that smooth. And of course, from here on out, I'm wearing gloves. I don't wanna get finger grease on my parts because in case I haven't told you, we are pour 15ing these bad boys. We're gonna use a high temperature caliper pour 15. Get this nice and saturated. Spray all this stuff. We're gonna let it sit for a half an hour saturated. You wanna keep this thing from getting dried on Keep it wet, let it soak in there. So, half an hour, here we go. All right, while the metal prep is doing its thing, we're gonna free up this lever. There we go. Now we'll clean it up. All right, here it is, nice and clean. I just sprayed this down with WD-40. Still some pits in it. Doesn't have to be the bell of the ball. We're not even gonna paint it because this thing is gonna float on a bubble of grease. We just saved ourselves 25 bucks and left and right side, so that's a $50 savings right there. So we're gonna set this aside and check on our etching. All right, if you're doing this outside in the sun, it might uh, haze up. You see how it kind of crystallizes? It gets a little white up here. If it gets white like this prior to your 30 minutes of soaking, you're going to come on, hit it again. There we go. Like I said before, keep it saturated until you got your 30 minutes up. Everything looks good. It's been about time, so I think we're good right here. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to scrub this again clean get all the etching stuff off scrub it down with water uh, make sure you use gloves again you do not want to touch this gonna scrub this up clean it and i'm gonna let it dry bone dry overnight so i will see you guys in the morning when this is all cleaned and dried before i let you go for the evening almost forgot one thing our tumbling hardware <laughs> go ahead and yoink that out And there we go. Plug her in. There. Continue to tumble our hardware overnight. Here we go. Let this dry up. Bone dry. See you in the morning. Night night. Alright guys, here we go. 
It is morning time and we are going to paint our parts. This is exactly what you want a pour 15. Pour 15, paint over rust, and this is the kind of rust they're talking about. Clean, uh, descaled, no grease, no grime, fresh, <laughs> fresh rust, if you will. It will adhere to this. It won't adhere to a dirty, flaky, loose rust. So preparation is everything with this stuff. Preparation H. Everything in here is nice and clean, and again, we are going to use gloves so we protect the parts from our greasy, oily fingers, <laughs> and uh, we're also protecting our fingers from the pore 15. It will stick to your skin very well. Uh, so here we go. We're going to use caliper paint because this can reach up to, I can't see it right here, I think it's 500 degrees because brakes get hot and we don't want the heat to peel off our paint. Before we get started, just want to mask off the important parts. Just rubbing a sharp edge over the other edge and it will cut the tape exactly where we want it. Makes it easier than trying to uh, custom trim it. So we're going to protect our threads and we're also going to mask off inside where the piston goes because we don't want paint in here either. We've got everything masked off and we're going to open up this pour 15 and we want to be very delicate with pour 15 all the time pour 15 needs to be stirred you don't want little air bubbles forming in the can when you shake it so you always stir your pour 15 this is the kind of brush you want to use with pour 15 these are the uh, economy brushes the really really cheap ones they are like uh, I don't know a dollar for a bag of 12 <laughs> but they're so cheap the bristles just fall out everywhere so you're gonna want to give this thing a good a good beating <sighs> yeah there's bristles coming out everywhere so the bristles don't fall out in your paint so pour 15 it goes on nice and smooth so you do a very little bit at a time and when I paint with pour 15 I dab it I don't brush it dab it because I want to make sure it makes nice good contact in all the little pits that form on a rusted surface so I really work the paint in tapping it nice and uh, nice and firmly and use it sparingly very little bit at a time Looking good. I think we got full coverage on here. Don't think I missed any spots. Very nice, very nice. They are all dangling to be dried. I made a nice little dowel to separate the string so it doesn't get stuck to the paint job here. And uh, I know what you guys are thinking. And the answer is yes. <laughs> you must dangle all your Pour 15 painted parts from a 90s BMX bike to ensure maximum Pour 15 curing. All right, while our other parts are being painted, we can take a look at our hardware. Now, these have been tumbling for a couple days. So while I was working on the other stuff, it was basically on autopilot, cleaning and tumbling. So let me fish all these out and we'll take a look. Wow, guys, these are looking good. This took no work, no effort at all. <laughs> Just tumbled them, man. While we were doing other things, this took care of itself. So this is great. These are the lug studs from the ZJ that I recovered before I scrapped it. If you don't have ZJ lug studs, I'll put a link in the description below. You can buy yourself some lug studs. We saved a couple bucks by reusing these and you're going to want to use the ZJ lug studs instead of the XJ lug studs because the backing plates for the ZJ are a little bit thicker than the XJ drum brake backing plates. So if you're running alloy wheels that are a little thicker, you're probably gonna wanna use the ZJ studs. If you're gonna use thin steel wheels, then you might be able to get away with XJ lug studs. And here are the backing plate studs. This attaches the backing plate to your axle, four on each side, and man, these look really good. If you don't have these, I suggest 
you buy some longer ones here's an example this is the xj backing plate stud versus the zj backing plate stud and you can see it's got about a quarter of an inch on it again because the backing plate is longer on the zj disc brakes over the drum brakes if you don't have these you can run to the hardware store they are 3 8 24 thread count and i'm glad i shined this up because look at this this stud was cross-threaded you can see that right there look at that so i'm gonna pop this in a vise i'm gonna run uh my thread chaser on it we'll see if we could fix this if not i got plenty more so yeah the zj lug studs and the zj backing plate studs to put on your xj all right guys and i realize that tumbling your hardware is kind of an odd practice if you don't have a tumbler that's cool you just do it the old-fashioned way put your stud in a vise grab a little wire brush on a drill and go to town and again guys here is that stud that was cross threaded you can see how these threads are kind of cocked on an angle i do have a replacement but i want to show you guys you could re-thread them with a die three in one cutting oil put a nice generous dose of oil on there then we would get our lovely craftsman made in china three eighths by 24 to make sure it's in the right groove you back it off a little bit then you feel it click down onto the right thread just gonna put that hand tight till you get some resistance and now we're gonna slowly turn this you feel some cutting resistance then you back it off a little bit and you keep going again there we go that's a good cut right there now we got a nice clean set of original threads. Um, so that's how you would fix a bolt. Fortunately for me, I have a replacement stud, so I won't need this. <laughs> I got one right here, all ready to go. All right, I'll leave a link in the description for these ZJ lug studs. And also, if you want ZJ backing plate studs from a hardware store, again, they're 3 8 by 24, and they're about an inch and a half long. So that's it, guys. On to the next part. All right, guys, time to talk about the e-brake cable. So here are the ZJ cables. Now, the ZJ has a housing in the center of the vehicle, and it lets the e-brake cables run right down the middle, and then they branch out to the left and the right, and you have two equal length cables. Easy, very good. Unfortunately, the XJ has its e-brake housing. It's all the way down on the driver's side. So when the two sides branch off you got your driver's side which is nice and short but your passenger side is extra long and uh unfortunately you cannot use the zj cables on the xj well i guess you could use the driver's side since it's short but the passenger side uh it's not gonna work so a lot of people what they do and i don't like doing this guys i don't even want to show you this they'll reuse the xj e-brake cable and they'll uh what they'll do is well yeah i got a little example <laughs> you take the spring that's on the XJ cable and you cut off a couple inches and then you got the cable sticking out and then what you could do is you loop the cable around and you put these little U clamps on you clamp it down and this becomes your XJ converted to a ZJ cable now I guess this system works because it's really cheap but I really don't like it because it's just more points to fail and especially up here in the northeast you got all these little nuts and bolts ah, it's more opportunity for things to go wrong so i don't like converting the xj cables uh zj cables obviously don't work so that uh new e-brake cables from a kj liberty and here is the part number right here 521-285-10 ag and the other one 521-285-11AF. Now, these are only like $40. Now, you really can't go wrong. Brand new cables. They're not bound up or seized at all. They're gonna work. And I'd just rather use this than, than botching an XJ cable. KJ Liberty is the way to go. Problem of the e-brake cable, solved. All right, so we gotta put on our dust shield over our backing plate. But before that, we gotta go ahead and put this on now this is a rubber boot for the parking brake lever and this is just nasty grimy covered in rust we're not going to use that so this is supposed to slide on here and unfortunately <laughs> this is discontinued or something can't find them anywhere the next best thing i could find 
was this. It's a Crown Automotive 509-3395AA. So this part number is for a TJ, and this part, well, it's for the ZJ. It fits. All we got to do is snip off this ridge. And here we go. That's what we're going to use for our new parking boot. All right, for this build, we're going to go with CRC Synthetic Brake Grease. It's good to use on all the brake parts. It's a uh, high temperature, and you basically put it on all the components, <laughs> except the actual pads and rotor itself. You're going to grease everything. That's it. That's all we do with that. We got the boot in place. Now we got to put on the dust cover, and it just sandwiches right over the boot like this. But before we do that, heck yeah, guys. <laughs> coating everything with some more grease yeah baby basically any metal on metal part on this uh, brake build is gonna get a nice healthy coating of grease all right this lays on right here remember that 3 16 bit and punch we used well we are gonna go ahead and use a 3 16 pop rivet so I'm thinking we're gonna go with a uh, all steel for strength, and we'll get two of these. This is a 0.126 to 0 0.250 grip, and it should be long enough to hold on to our backing plate. So I'm gonna put both of them in at once. So the dust cover sits nicely on the backing plate. We'll go get our uh, rivet gun. Make sure you got the 3 16 bit Now our backing plate is one piece. All right, we got our backing plate assembled as one piece now. We're gonna go ahead and install our parking brake lever. We cleaned this up. It hasn't been painted, it's just been sitting in WD-40. Now, uh, this part is universal for left and right. You can see it has L and R, uh, but this piece is specific to the side of the vehicle. Now, depending on the left and right side will depend on how you position this piece. Uh, if you put it in I'm going to call it in incorrectly. If you put this piece on the top and you put this piece on the bottom, gravity will just naturally want to force these two pieces apart. And since this piece has to face the back of the vehicle, you're going to have the wrong side facing up. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that this part is on the bottom of the vehicle or the brake setup and then you lay this piece on top of it. This way gravity is always keeping these two pieces in contact and we have the proper side of the vehicle displaying up. So it's gonna be left, this is the driver's side, so we're good to go. So we're gonna just lube this up with grease and we're gonna slide it in our boot. All right, and again, this little hook goes to the back because when you pull that e-brake lever, the tension is gonna separate these two pieces by pulling this forward and then it's gonna stretch onto the parking brake pads. So our lever's all greased up. Now we'll just put it in and slide it through. All right, we got brand new brake hardware to replace all that rusted crap we threw out. This is the hardware and these are the brake shoes. Uh, left and right come in each back. So left and right and left and right. Let's go ahead and check the part number. Let's see, centric brake parts number uh, 1186103.7 and Monroe BX701. All right, since the brake shoes ride on these little nubs right here and they go into this part up here. Let's see, make sure that all fits. Yep. Since it sits right there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grease up all this part. Again, wherever there's a middle to middle contact, you're going to want to put on brake grease. Okay, so the top of these brake shoes slide in these little grooves right here. This little pointy part is the top. Let's set this into position. Now we'll lock them in place with the springs. Going to go ahead and insert these from the bottom. Of course, I'll hit it up with a little bit of grease. <laughs> Why not? And where this locks down, put some grease too. All right, so we got our pin in line with this clip. Uh, my finger on the bottom is pushing that pin up. There we go. All right, we got our clips holding our shoes on that we could put on our top spring. Now this little hook is just gonna drop right in here. 
And then I'm going to use this pick and stretch this across with all my thumb strength. <laughs> Get it in that other hole. So I'll make sure that's in all the way. There we go. Now she's in. All right, next thing going on is our adjusting thingy. <laughs> we're gonna thread on this little star nut right onto this little bolt, and then we're gonna go ahead and slide this on. Again, covering it all with grease. You know what, you can bring this most of the way down. All right, nice and filthy. <laughs> so greasy. Uh, you might think this is all overkill, but all the rust in New York and the rust belt is horrible. So you wanna make sure this adjustment little uh, little nut is right over this hole. That's important later. We'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, gonna line this up. There we go. Clip that right in place. Right on our brake shoes. And then take the final spring and put it in these holes. There we go. And what I had mentioned earlier, this hole is important lining up with this screw because this is how we adjust the tension of our brake. So that's it right there. You wanna have access to it. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead, throw some grease on there and put in this little rubber plug. And here it is guys, our complete parking brake assembly. Nice. So now when you go ahead and you pull your parking brake, it pulls the cable, tightens this lever and the lever separates the two brake shoes you'll get a nice tight parking brake next part all right here we go caliper rebuild time now we'll go ahead and we'll peel off this tape nice clean threads this is the old piston this is the old seal and we're going to replace that with a new piston and a new seal. Centric parts, 143-610-19. And um, yeah, I forgot the part number, but it'll be in the description. So we're gonna put in the first O-ring. We got ourselves some dot three brake fluid. Just want a little bit on here because brake fluid is corrosive. I really don't wanna ruin our nice new paint job. So just a little bit is all I need for now. A little bit goes a long way. Now, try not to get brake fluid on this outer rim because you don't want it lubed up when you're putting in the seal. We're gonna go put in our new phenolic piston. Now, these are made of some kind of compressed plastic. It's pretty cool because they don't rot or corrode, so you're gonna have a nice seal all the time, but they are made <laughs> of plastic, so they do chip. They're kind of brittle. So we're just gonna slide this in and push it right in its home. Should be nice and tight with that new seal. Oh yeah. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? All right, here we go. Since you have phenolic pistons, you're definitely gonna wanna use a wood shim to support your C-clamp because do not want it to break. There we go. I think I finally broke that resistance of the seal. Let's see. Come on, baby. There, there we go. Oh, wow. All right, here we go. Time to put in the new seal. We got our piston in there, and we wanna make sure that we don't lubricate in here because we want this to stay firm inside its little, little housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this on. Nice. And bring back the old 3 16 punch. <laughs> yeah, baby. So, you know what? I might even use the round end on the back. Just tap it in place. All right, there we go. That is on there. Now, whatever you do, don't puncture your boot with whatever it is you're hitting it with. So, send this back home a little bit more. Nice. This is great. Looking good. All right, next up, we've got our little rubber slider boots. Um, I got new ones. 7832011 ARI. All right, we'll go with that. Um, came in a four pack. I got two left. 
so I'll put a link in the description. We're gonna go ahead and lube these. You wanna put extra grease on when they're brand new because they just come so dry. <laughs> All right, and the best way to put these in, pinch them flat and kind of fold them, roll them up. There we go. And they just pop back into place. Roll them up. Stuff them in. Now the sliders, this one is nice and smooth, so we'll just put some more brake grease on here. And we're gonna poke them in. There we go. We want them to slide nice and freely. <laughs> this is slipperier than Harry's fingers in Home Alone 2. Shoot her! I'm trying to shoot her! Alright, next we've got some new bleeders. These are Dorman parts. Got these in the auto parts store. Again, it's a 3 8 bleeder. Pretty standard. This just gets threaded on right here. Now we got our banjo bolt and our soft line. This is all cleaned up. We're going to reuse these. Just want to make sure that this isn't like dry rotted or anything like that. So this line looks good. The bleeder is always up. And since the brake lines come from above, I'm going to make sure that the soft line goes out towards the bleeder. Now, before we attach these, we're going to want to get two copper crush washers. This will ensure a good hydraulic seal on the brake line. Got a two pack here. We'll leave the link in the description below for this too. And here we go. So what happens is these little grooves, they get crushed into your oak washer and that is what makes your seal. So one on either side and then the banjo bolt. That little port is surrounded by a thin little rib so that will let fluid flow through your banjo bolt. So here we go. I'm not gonna crush this down tight just yet. I'll crush it down tight later. So I'm just gonna hand thread this. Nice and neat. We'll apply the proper amount of torque later on. So there we go. New banjo bolt, crush washers, making a nice hydraulic seal. And we got our new bleeder valve in. We got our new sliders and pins. And of course, our new phenolic piston and a new gasket and seal here. All right, I went with the Power Stop Evolution brake pads. This is 17-666. Not crazy about that number, <laughs> but that's what I need. Uh, comes in a four pack, so I'm gonna use two on this side. <laughs> you guessed it, a nice healthy dose of grease. Here we go, brake grease. That is good on the back of brake pads, you betcha. There we go, pop that in. And when your new pad is in, you can go and compress the old piston all the way down again. <sighs> go ahead and get this all the way down. Come on. And after your first brake pad is in place and you got your caliper all the way compressed, go ahead and apply copious amounts of grease onto your second brake pad and you can pop it in. It's got little grooves. You want to slide into place here, and that's it. That just clips right on. All right, there it is, guys. There is your completed caliper. Now it really gets exciting. <laughs> We're going to put together our backing plate with our caliper. And of course, we got clean caliper bolts with a fair share of lube. Brake grease, baby. There it is, guys. Completely restored rear disc setup. All right, looking good. Gonna set this aside and on to the next part. Here's another part. It is very small, but it is very important. You're gonna need the ZJ proportioning valve. I got this one out of my part ZJ. What you do is you take the proportioning block. This is right up there by the master cylinder. You just pop off this rubber cap and then you can loosen up this bolt. This is a uh, like a 19 millimeter or 21 millimeter fastener. Oops. Take this off, and what you do is you're gonna slide out all the guts. Take out the prop valve. Here it is. Spring and valve and cap. You're gonna need this. You're gonna have to put this 
and the proportioning block of your XJ. It is very important that you put your ZJ proportioning valve in your XJ because the XJ proportioning valve allows a lot more fluid into the back because the drum brakes takes a lot more fluid to bind up. So if you don't do this swap, what's gonna happen is you're gonna step on your brakes and your disc brakes in your XJ will lock up really quick and you'll you'll be skidding your back tires and you don't want that so you're gonna need to do the prop valve swap very simple very straightforward very important all right guys for my swap i want to retain my anti-lock brakes and my xj so what i did was i was able to pull the axle shafts from a zj that had the disc brakes <laughs> that's in my video go check that out um <laughs> Uh, what I want is the tone ring. Now, you don't need the whole axle. Uh, I'm just going to do an axle swap. Simple. So, I need this tone ring for my ABS. So, I'm going to use those axles. And you're also going to need the ABS sensors. Now, these I also got from that same vehicle. So, here we go. We're going to adapt these to my backing plates. And uh, that's it. This will be able to fit... On my XJ, I'll retain my ABS. These little clips are the same. So, ZJ sensors in the rear to put on your XJ. Tone ring sensors, good to go. All right, and last but not least, the final part we need to address in our rear disc brake conversion parts video is this ugly, dusty, rusty, crusty rotor. Easy solution, gonna scrap those. Power Stop Evolution coated rotors. No problem. She's a beauty. All right, that's it guys. That is all the parts we need to go over for our disc brake conversion. All right guys, here we go. One last overview of all the ZJ parts we're gonna be putting on our XJ. And we're gonna start with these beautifully restored backing plates and dust covers. These have been painted and we outfitted them with brand new parking brake hardware. Got nice brake shoes, and over here we got nice new painted and restored calipers. We put brand new phenolic pistons in there. We even got nice copper crush washers on our banjo bolts. We got new boots here, and of course we got a new bleeder valve. And over here we got all our lug studs. These are all nice and tumbled. We got our studs for our backing plates. Um, all the threads have been checked. They work. They're good. We got a ZJ prop valve. You need the proportioning valve, guys, don't forget. Uh, new rotors, of course, new rotors. Uh, we got our KJ parking brake cables, so you don't have to mess with your XJ parking brakes. Forget all that. KJ parking brake cables. And we also got, we got our ABS sensors. So if you guys want to retain your ABS, you're gonna have to get ABS sensors and a tone ring on your axles. I'm just doing an axle swap. So that's it, guys. This is all the parts you need and I can't wait to get these on that XJ. All right guys, that is a wrap for our comprehensive parts preparation video for everything you need to do to get ZJ rear disc brake parts prepared to be put on an XJ. Wow, so I will leave a link in the description below to all the parts you're gonna need, all the same things that I got so you could use for your build if you wanna go that route. Um, you could do this for a Dan 35 or a Chrysler eight and a quarter you're just going to have to widen out that hole on the backing plate to fit them on your larger diameter Chrysler 8 and a quarter. So this is good for all XJs. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to start this because it's going to open up a whole new series on working on this XJ. So stay tuned for that, guys. Hey, we are coming up on 10,000 subscribers. That blows my mind. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. Mash that like button. Subscribe. Share it with your friends. I'll see you guys on the next project. Peace. Sorry guys, complete amateur hour. <laughs> oh my goodness.